Hello out there, and for the next few days I'll be at the beach just uh, taking a few days away, having a quick little mini vacation, and I figured what's a real vacation unless you bring some knives with you and do some testing. And so what I'm going to be doing is bringing these knives along, probably a few others as well, to, uh, to test in like a saltwater corrosive kind of environment. So I've carried the Dragonfly a number of times before, this one with the H1 steel. You know, I brought it on my honeymoon to Puerto Rico, and I've brought it, you know, all over the place in hot, humid, salty climates, and, and always it's done really well. But I figure why not test a few other knives while I am there, or just some, some scraps, and, you know, set up a little bit of a science experiment and have a good time. So I guess you really could do that anywhere, but I figure since I'm going to the beach, why not actually uh, make it happen while I'm there. So that's the plan. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, that dragonfly. We'll also have this man bug, which I'm going to be EDCing a lot of the time too, because I really want to get some use on these, uh, these serrations. The serrations on the H1 steel are fantastic. So uh, really, really excited to do that. But then also I have the... Uh, the Ganzo here with 440C, so we're going to test that steel and its corrosion resistance. We also have a really interesting one. This is the blade from the Kershaw Hops, and I picked this one because I want to see how 8CR 13MOV does, but we also have like a two-tone here, so we could see how maybe the coating holds up versus the rest of the uh, uncoated part of the steel. So be really neat to see how this actually reacts to uh, to the salty environment and if one part of it rusts and one of it doesn't, all of it does, none of it does, who knows. But i um, going to definitely take a look at that. And then we also have some Sandvik steel down here, 14C28N. This is an old Kershaw Whirlwind blade um, that was broken and is, and is just uh, out of commission. And this one um, I still need to clean up just a little bit in order to you know make sure it's in good shape going into the actual experiment, but there are parts of it that are stonewashed and parts of it that aren't. So that's gonna make this one a little bit interesting. Will that really have an effect on um, how that reacts to the salty environment? Not sure, so that should be fun. Um, like I said, also gonna throw in maybe a couple other things uh, that I really think would rust, stuff like this uh, old beat up Barlow that um, has almost no life left in it. Just really not in very good shape, so maybe see what happens when, uh, when this gets exposed. So I'm gonna set up that science experiment and get it ready to go and, uh, and let you know how it goes. So I will check back with you shortly with the preliminary results, at least part one. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so here we are with the results that I have after right around 24 hours of this test. And before I get into what any of the specific uh, results are, I just want to make clear that this isn't a conclusive test by any means of any of the steels that we have here or the actual knives in question, because um, there's a ton of variables when it comes to testing like saltwater corrosion. And some of them I took into account and some of them I was curious about and some of them I didn't. And once you start to get results, you start to see that you can't exactly pin a cause on why one specific knife behaves a certain way when it's subjected to these elements. So um, obviously, as you can maybe guess, I'm already planning a follow-up video to this and something I'll be doing uh, more of in the future. But what I'll do now is just sort of talk about the results for each knife that I had and um, just some of my ideas behind them. But again, nothing conclusive here, just some real curiosities and some interesting things, especially uh, when we get to the H1. But starting with the 8CR13 MOV, and this is that Kershaw hops, and you can see just a ton of rust from the salt water on this knife as it is. You know, and there's rust on both the coated part and then also the non-coated part. And what I did basically, and I'll actually move the camera and show you this real quickly, was I just submerged the knives in like a Tupperware of salt water from the beach for about an hour at a time and then removed them and let them dry and then submerged them again and removed them and let them dry and just continued that process on and off for, for about a day. So again, nothing so scientific, nothing exact, but you can see there is a lot of rust on this 8CR. 
and looking at the places where the rust formed, that's really where the salt water beaded. You, you, as you can see, like I didn't place this drop here. What happens is when you take it out of the, the salt water, the, the water just beads in specific places for whatever reason, and that's where the rust started to form. The first rust was right here on this one, and that's where it's the worst, but then these spots started to show up probably after about a half day. So this coating actually did protect the knife for for small amounts of time. And what you have to keep in mind is that this is in no way a real life measuring of how you're going to use this knife in salt water. You would never really submerge the knife and then take it out and then submerge it again. You would probably, if you take care of your knives at all, you know, if it does get exposed to something like this, you'd wipe it off and clean it. And and that's where that follow up is gonna come in. You know, I'm gonna, gonna test a more real life um, you know, type of exposure than just a straight submersion in the salt water. But again, um, you can see what the 8CR13 did here. It did rust quite a bit, uh, especially after a good amount of time, but it did hold up for a while. All right, and let's get to the 440C. The 440C was a bit of a surprise, and you can see a lot of rust that formed in a number of areas. And the 440C is one of my absolute favorite steels. It's probably my favorite budget steel. And the thing about Ganzo that I love the most, because I really like the way the steel comes, how sharp it is, the way it retains its edge, but also um, also just the level of quality when it comes to corrosion resistance. If you were with the channel at the time, I took one of these uh, Firebirds to Colorado and just left it in the snow for, for four days, and the thing didn't rust at all, it was perfect. Obviously a different kind of cleanliness when it comes to the water. But um, here you can see there was a, a good deal of rust. And again, the satin finish, the water beaded in certain places, and that's where the rust formed. Also, you can see where the uh, lettering is. A lot of it, if I can get that focused again, a lot of it focused and did a lot of damage right there where the lettering is. And that is um, really indicative and, and typical because that's uh, oftentimes just creates a weakness in the actual... Um, the actual finish on the steel. So you can see a little bit of rust there too. Um, nothing really bad though going back on the knife with the inner parts and opening and closing. I mean I don't notice any real rust on the inside but I'll have to take this one apart to see. But overall I mean this is just stuff that could be wiped and taken care of pretty quickly so not a huge deal. But what I am going to do the follow-up video that I'm planning on doing is going to be with 440C. And so it's going to be um, me using the knife and cleaning it immediately and then me using the knife and not and then, you know, just a few other variations all with 440C blades to see how it actually will rust in use because this is, again, certainly not a typical kind of way to, to uh, test this. All right, moving on to um, the Sandvik. The Sandvik was fantastic. Sandvik almost had zero issues. Um, almost didn't rust at all. As you can see on the back side right here, there is a spot that is starting to rust now, but that's only after 24 hours. This is a knife that I stone washed myself and then removed some of that stone wash to, uh, to, to have dual finishes to see if that would make a difference here, but it really hasn't. Um, hasn't really rusted much at all. So I'm not sure how long that's gonna go. I'll follow up with that. I'm gonna continue the experiment with this knife, especially this blade for a while longer. All right, and then um, H1 is really the last thing that I need to talk about. Uh, you can see this Barlow here is just really old and beat up. Um, this one rusted immediately and just got really, really bad, <laughs> really bad rust in a number of spots in no time. But a lot of that, and this is actually going to lead into what we're talking about with the H1, a lot of that has to do with other components that attach themselves to the blade. All right, and so let me talk about that with H1. So one of the really interesting interviews that I've seen about this steel, this, this rust-proof H1, was from Eric Glesser, and Eric Glesser was talking about if you ever see rust on your H1, it's because some other kind of material is like either a chemical or something else has bonded to the knife itself, and that can create surface rust that makes you think it's the steel, but it's actually not the steel. It's whatever other material has gotten onto the knife. And that has happened with me and this knife. There was a spot um, earlier today when I took this, um, when I checked on this stuff, there's a spot of rust right up here. 
and I literally just went like this and it wiped off. So there was something, either like a, a chemical or dirt or some other kind of um, component that attached to the, to the steel, you know, just a, a dirtiness, and that allows a little bit of surface rust, but the steel itself, perfectly fine and no rust formed. Now, we've talked about in the past this, uh, this logo on the H1 and how I did get a rust spot there, you know, on the logo itself. And you can see that's been there for quite a long time. Well, I also have this new man bug, and take a look at this. Maybe you can see the color, but where it says 090V, that whole area has rust on it. And it's not on the, the actual steel itself, it's only right on that number. And so I'm not sure if that makes the that area susceptible. I'm not sure if that's a laser marking. Um, I mean, it feels like a laser marking, so, so I'm not sure if it's just that laser part that is rusting, but it's really interesting. And, you know, again, that's the only part. So uh, one of those curious things when it comes to, uh, to H1, but that's not the only time that, you know, a, uh, a knife can, can get surface rust that's not actually the steel. And so I think a lot of that is from the Barlow here. You know, I'm sure some of this is on the steel, but there is just a lot of stuff that, a lot of dirt and a lot of grime that just aids in that forming quickly. All right, so again, that's just a, a little experiment that I wanted to do. Obviously, when it comes to 440C, because I have a lot of Ganzos and Firebirds, I'll be able to follow up about that, and so that's something I'm going to do in the near future. But thanks for watching. Any kind of feedback, any kind of ideas that I could do to, uh, to make this kind of experiment better, definitely let me know. But again, nothing conclusive when it comes to steel or steel quality, just, uh, just some, some nice information for me to, uh, to go forward with. So thanks again for watching. Take care, and have a good one.